I'm keen for you to meet Michael Gillings, a passionate professor of biology at Macquarie University, who's turned an old fiberglass pool into a fantastic aquatic garden. It's really nice to come home to an oasis of organisms, the plants, the frogs, the fish, the lizards. You never know what you're going to see. So really what it's done is created a whole new habitat for you to study. Yes, it has. I'm fascinated to come out here every day and find something new. Why did you decide to turn your pool into a pond? Having this pool in the backyard was a white elephant and I really didn't want to maintain it and pay the electricity and fill it full of chemicals. So I just thought, well, why don't I just let it go natural? I turn the pump off and then you get a bloom of algae. It turns green like an unmaintained swimming pool does. And then over about two or three months, you start to get aquatic invertebrates colonising the pool. Once that happens, there's food for fish and the water quality is good so you can start adding in plants and fish. So don't go shock horror if the water turns oh, green. That's you've totally got to natural. be prepared for the greenness when you start. If you've got a saltwater pool, the process is a bit longer. You'll need permission from the water board to drain the water and remove the salt. And remember, it's still a swimming pool, just a different kind. Anything that council required when you first put in the pool you still need, like fences and gates. So tell me about your little babbling brook here. Well, one of the problems with the pond is that you get what's called an oxycline. The bottom part of the pond has no oxygen in it, and that's really not very good for fish. So we put this in. It's a small pond pump that feeds through a set of pipes, and this oxygenates the pool and moves the water around, but also provides a haven for small aquatic invertebrates and tadpoles. So you'd recommend putting it in right at the start for people? I would. I'd recommend at least one small pond pump just to keep the water moving and to aerate it. And you've got a lovely pot of nardoo, I know. Nardoo, noticed. yes. So that's just growing in a pot? That's growing in a floating pot, so it's got a ring of polystyrene around it and it just floats around the pool. So you've used plants really effectively along the edge of the pond. How did you make it happen? Well, we lined the inside of the pond with shade cloth and put logs and rocks down. But then to put plants around the edge, we used uh, metal hanging baskets, which are suspended off the side of the pool. And so that, that allows you to put plants all along the side of the pool, like this. Mm, a dark leaf colocasia. Yeah. Yes, very clever. I love your strategy there. I'm really happy about the... Um, As a biologist, Michael is interested in all living creatures. When you bring moss into the garden, all sorts of things start to appear out of the moss, like these tiny little ferns here. Every single moss is different. The diversity that's here is just amazing. And I like the fact that they're underappreciated. So how do you do it? How do you get the mosses growing? So mosses can be collected from anywhere. They're in every ditch, beside every road. But one of the tips that I've found is that if you use brickies sand and you put the moss on top of that, that helps with the transplanting. So the bricky sand has a little bit of extra clay in it to retain the moisture? I guess so, yeah. Of course, mosses will also grow of their own accord in your, in your pond as well. So Angus, here's something you really need to keep out of your pond. If you go down to the creek, people are tempted to catch fish and introduce them to their pond, but almost certainly you'll catch these guys, Gambusia, and they're the keen toad of fresh water. So they're an exotic fish that's been brought in? They're a, an exotic fish and they eat all native fish eggs, they eat all the invertebrates. So anytime I get a plant, I always stick it in a bucket of water for a while to quarantine it, make sure there's no gambusia before I put them in the pond. So what sort of native fish alternatives are there? We have two species here, the crimson spotted rainbow fish and a species of gudgeon. 
and what they do in the pond is eat the insect larvae, in particular they eat mosquito larvae. So you think this could be an archetypal Australian garden style? I, I would hope so. There's so many unused swimming pools and they can all be turned into this kind of garden. Even in this tiny garden, Michael's love of the natural world shines through. A place to watch the world go by. We tend to forget that we're part of that natural world. We set ourselves apart from it. Doing something like this, gardening in general, and the pond in particular, because it involves animals as well as plants, puts us firmly back in that natural world. Thank you.